Welcome to the Musicians Insider. I'm your host, Cronus. And today we're going to have, for the very first episode, our inaugural episode, we're going to have Robert Scoble, Scobelizer, who's really been one of the firsts in a lot of places. He was the first in a Tesla, the first guy to use Google Glass in the shower and make no one else want to use it. Um, a lot of firsts. So uh, without further ado, uh, we'll bring him on shortly here. I'd like to introduce Robert Scoble. Yeah. Yeah, this is my first one. You're the first oh, one. Wow. That's awesome. So, hey, everybody. somebody had to be first. <laughs> so, hey, everyone, welcome to my first inaugural podcast for the Musicians Insider. I'm Cronus, and our first guest is none other than Robert Scoble, Scobelizer. He is always first. So I thought it'd be interesting to say some of the things you've been first at. Um, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, because I haven't really wikipedia oh, you. <laughs> I've been working as a journalist or futurist in the tech industry for a long time, um, building online communities and stuff like that. Um, I was the first one to see the first Tesla. I was the first one to see Flipboard. I was the 79th user of Instagram. Siri was launched in my son's bedroom. So then that's just some of the weird shit that's happened in my life. So. I noticed you left out the Google Glass. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I wore that for a year. That was always fun. That, that'll come back someday. I really enjoy um, just when I speak to you and talk to you about things just because you are a futurist and I don't know many people who are and like you're the one guy kind of like when I go to you you're, you're on the cutting edge all the time making sure that stuff is going to be great for your life. So I, yeah. um, my, my, my entire podcast is dedicated to music. Um, it's the Musicians Insider. I can't even say it. The Musicians Insider. Um, but a lot of things you do are music related. Um, and yeah. I think even without even realizing it, but I think, as you know, you've got the best music headphones on your head right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> the See what I'm wearing? Oh, over, overpriced Apple headphones. Uh, no, they're actually really good. <laughs> yeah, these, that's cool. These are in-ear yeah. monitors from 64 Audio. They're one of my uh, um, sponsors, actually, So for my music that's project. Awesome. So I get these in-ears that are just beautiful and they have 12 drivers in them so I can hear everything very clearly. And uh, it's just, I can't believe the way technology has gone. Um, one of the things that I've found is in my life, the technology has now got to where I can actually do all the music stuff I've been sort of afraid to do. I think one of my problems was being a perfectionist. I always wanted yeah. it to be right. So then by the time I got it right, it's like I'm 45. So <laughs> um, yeah. That's, but, uh, that's the way it is. <laughs> it takes, so, I'm 55. I still haven't got it right. So. <laughs> we first met at the Twitter 140 conference, actually, I think. Um, have you seen what Jeff Pulver has been up to lately? Do you know Jeff? I haven't. I, I do know him. I've, He's uh, got some cool stuff in New York right now. He's got Pulver EDU. Uh, I would yeah. check it out, you know, and uh, I was doing, I was going to teach a course for them and then I got a job and had to stop and bail on them. But um, yeah. I'm up in Canada now. So I ran into you again at South by Southwest after I won Jeremy Shoemaker's contest. Uh, it was like 69 reasons to send me to South by Southwest on Jeremy and Isaiah's dime. The Isaiah guys, and I, I remember when I met you first, they were kind of weird. Like they yeah. had their opinions and I, I don't know, like it was interesting to like hear one of them talk shit about you. And then I was like, wait a minute. And I met you. I was like, no, this guy's cool. And I was like, I'd rather be your friend than his. <laughs> <laughs> And so I was like, well, thank you. <laughs> but, but at the time I was just like, whatever, you know, I'd give them the benefit of the doubt to you. So um, I might've barfed on his shoes. So <laughs> I think that's funny. Yeah. I think that's funny. <laughs> Isaiah, I don't know that really, if they've ever gotten to anywhere bigger than they did. Um, no. <laughs> so music, They're music's right, always, though. music's always in, in a way, part of something that, that we're doing um, on Jeff Pulver's last little show, they had uh, the music director of SNL on it as a, on a zoom. So wow. they've always got some cool people in there to, to listen to. And I'm just networking as much as I can um, with you. I know we were talking a lot about just awesome video game stuff. Uh, I've been yeah. really, I appreciate your invite to come and try out some of the immersive VR stuff. I haven't been in yeah. uh, the area in a long time. And now that Burning Man's been canceled two years in a row, I'm not even anywhere near you. Um, but I've been playing Hearthstone and I have 999 wins. I'm about to have a thousand wins. I'm going to go live on <laughs> my stream tonight and I'll have the, it's like, it's like, have you ever played Magic the Gathering? It's like that. No. Okay. Um, it's a very direct damage type game with cards, but you know how you play Monopoly? It's like the, someone has to be the banker and it's annoying. 
with yeah. Magic the Gathering cards we used to play in college, it was annoying to do the math with a pencil. And now if you have um, an iPad with Monopoly on it, it's all the math is done. So it's oh, like yeah. that. It's kind of nice. Um, I have I have a, a, a Monopoly game that you talk to the banker is electronic. So see again, you got the next level of it. I, I, I love that. <laughs> and why hasn't that come out sooner? Imagine you sit there, you have like the game Trouble it, or whatever. You press a it's button. It's, it, the computer has to be really cheap in a board game. <laughs> so they had to wait for the the price of that thing to come way down. You think it might be like a YouTube, oh, sorry, like a Bluetooth board game that connects to your phone now, right? That just changes games every time. I bet you that's yeah. that's coming out soon. Um, there, there is there's a company called Tilt Five that's coming out with a, a, a board for your uh, coffee table or your kitchen table, and you put on some glasses, and then you get as many games as they're going to deliver. So there it comes. So, um, yeah. I also, I was, I was listening to uh, some of your Twitter chats lately, just a little bit. I heard you guys yesterday and uh, a couple of weeks ago I was on, and I noticed there was some cool stuff. Uh, one of the guys had a VR link to a all the like virtual VR worlds you could go to. I thought that was really cool. I love that you have people yeah. on all the time. Robert's always got some interesting people on talking about the latest technologies. And there's always someone who's, friends. who's worked yeah. somewhere crazy. Uh, and then yeah, I heard you talking last about- we had in a- we had a, a natural language processing guy, an AI expert who's been doing it for 20 years. Yeah. The next word I have is AI on my screen here. I wanted Not to cool. ask you, how afraid of it are you? And you know it's inevitable, yet the way it has to go, the real test, I think, will be... I'm not afraid of it. Can I mean, it I have the Facebook portal behind me, and I have a, a Tesla in the garage, and I have a June oven with a camera that you put bread into the oven, and it goes, oh, there's toast in the oven, I'll yeah. toast it. Yeah. You're the real first privacy is gone advocate. And I totally get that. You need the removal of privacy mm-hmm. to do specific tasks, like have Android, like have a droid talk to you without giving it approval first, right? It's got to be allowed yeah. to. So, yeah. but um, w- the real test I was going to say was, can AI write a joke that makes us laugh? You know, I think when they can start doing things like that, we're going to start to get yeah. into the real business of where we are with what AI can do. Um I think an important thing that people don't talk about, and I find it's very interesting, if you've seen The Mandalorian, how IG-11 was, it's a robot. Basically, if you watch that, they uh, trained the robot from beginning, Um, they reprogrammed it. And my point is, a robot or any type of AI, it must rapidly, eventually, but it, it must be learning and development similar to a human, you know, like our brain doesn't start like this when we're born. You know, yeah. a 30, a 30 year old human is much more developed than a, a baby. So, you know, the hand of the robot, the first thing it has to do is it goes, okay, this is my hand. It has to get excited. Then it has to go, this is an object. And then it get, when it grabs the object, it gets excited. So that whole yeah. neural network learning stuff is what they have to do to make it work. I don't know how they're going to do yeah. it, but that's it. That's the key. I thought I'd yeah. ask you your thought on that. Step, step by step. Uh, autonomous cars work like that, right? Uh, my car sees stop signs and stop lights and lane markings and other things around pedestrians, bicyclists, and it's all doing that through AI. And, you know, if you look at where the world is going, it's going there pretty quickly uh, in terms of human history, right? What do you think is coming next? No. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's a big question. Apple. Uh, yeah. We're all waiting for Apple to come out with its new Apple, the new 3D Apple. And uh, they're doing a lot of things in the home to own it. So w- when it comes, it's going to be big, but uh, probably next year. That's I know since I've met you, you've been waiting for the clear iPhone to come out that never happened, like these things that were coming and coming. So if you're saying next year, I'm going to uh, guess it's two years away. No, um, the, the, the leaks and the patents are raining out of the sky. So it's coming soon. Yeah. So... About VR and holograms, I find that VR makes users feel kind of sick, right? Like I've had a few times where I tried it, I'm like, kind of get whatever. Obviously, yeah, the, my wife does too. The mixed reality is much better. Um, uh, I was reading an article about something here. Um, it was on, I forget what it was, but a person named uh, Liang Shi believes that the new approach, which the team that they're on calls tensor holography, will finally bring that elusive 10 year goal within reach to have holograms like VR and 3D printing worlds like together. Like, I don't understand that. Have you heard of that tensor holography? 
No, I haven't, but there's a whole bunch of work being done on displays to bring different kinds of holograms, either to glasses or windshields in cars, right? Will we have the Princess Leia hologram? Will we have the R2-D2 projecting? As long as you put on glasses, yes. Uh, There's screens that can do some of that, uh, but only in localized places. The screen, once you put on glasses, it's over. So, uh, you know, in the next few years, you're going to see some really crazy new technologies come along. I'm excited. I, I heard you guys talking a little bit about music AI for 20 bucks a month. And then you were talking about somehow there was a Canadian joke where they said something about you put the A in decay. And I was like, okay, enough of that. But <laughs> I, I did want to ask you about that. Uh, what do you think about oh, I, the future of music? And you know, aside from nepotism and things like that, is it going, where is it going? You know? Well, there, there's a couple of ways to look at it. What, one, start out with this new over the year headphone, Apple headphone. Right, and this this has two AI computers in it. That's what makes this different than all the other headphones in the market. The noise canceling is the best on the market right now because of that. It has nine little microphones around it, and it has a new thing called spatial audio. So I can hear music or sound coming from all around me. It's a, a infinite surround sound system, basically. And then you start thinking about what happens if they put an augmented reality computer onto this thing where it can um, see the world. Well, now you can put music on your living room floor and walk around it like you were walking on stage at the Beatles, you know, and walking in between the band members as they're playing. That's that's gonna radically change music. And and then we're gonna get all the visuals, right? So we're gonna be able to be in a rave in your living room or a Coachella music festival in your living room, right? So, and that's coming next year as well. From I would love to hear. Like I'd love to hear your thought on what an artist can do to get ahead of the curve, because most artists don't even have oh. like a website. <laughs> yeah, this is I, ahead of the curve. If you're not playing with VR and understanding what metaverses are, you probably are already way behind. You need to catch up. Um, if you don't have a VR headset like an Oculus Quest, it's 300 bucks. Get one. Which Even one should people think, get? Oculus Quest 2.0. It's Quest 2. $300. It's 300 bucks. It's down there. And, um, you, and it works on its own now, right? It's, it's self-contained. Yeah, yeah, it's a scan. You don't need any computer. You just need to buy an Oculus Quest for 300 bucks. The reason I want you to do that is it starts showing you what presence and what immersion means. And you start learning how other developers are building virtual worlds for you to enjoy. You are going to start getting a language around this. You're going to start understanding what people mean when they talk about immersion and presence, right? So that you can have some real conversations with your tech teams about the future of your brand and a future of where you're going to go with this stuff, right? Because the if you've if you're Marshmallow, for instance, he played at Coachella. I saw him five years ago, six years ago, something like that. And in Coachella, in the Sahara tent, only uh, ten to 20,000 people can fit in that one venue. Well, he, he played on Fortnite, and he gets uh, 11 million people watching. So if that didn't get your attention... That was insane. As a musician, then that's then you're not going to get you're not going to get anything because you're not really in the audience business, right? And music is about building audiences, right? Yeah, and like even with crypto coins currency, you can make a coin for your band that's like only people can buy stuff from that and it kind of makes sense to do that as an artist. It doesn't make sense to do it as a as a company unless you're like nintendo and you're selling these coins or someone like who does that they haven't even done it yet uh, don't don't go there because in 10 years everything's gonna work like nfts <laughs> so, i mean yeah. a lot of things are gonna be on my walls Vir- virtual things are gonna be on my walls all over my house right are you and it's uh, do, hopefully i can ha- afford some nice ones you know but do, do you uh, care about be unique, cheap. do you care about a unique nfts uh if you bu- want to own an ansel adams photo it it costs money. It's Do you unique. care about it being unique? Uh, I don't care, but other people do. I pay attention to what other people care about, and other people care about having things in their homes that uh, that they care about, right? That, that, that's unique. If so you're will a people rich make... guy, you have a, a, a Picasso on the wall, right? Well, can people <laughs> you know? just make a fake NFT and pretend it's the real one? Like, will people do that then? 
Um, they can, but I come along with my glasses and go, no, that's not a real NFT. I already <laughs> looked up the NFT and it's not a real NFT. You're trying to fake me out, man. So stop lying that you own a Picasso on the wall. <laughs> so right now, NFTs is a a really, it's a really big Choo-choo moneymaker. Building, uh, for you, anyone you, should, you should start watching an artist called Tutu. Okay. Um, he, he works for uh, Dylan Francis. He's been doing all sorts of uh, art for Dylan Francis, and he's building all sorts of metaverse-based art for the music industry, and, and he's doing badass shit. So Very cool. he's working with a company called The Wave, which is doing this kind of virtual thing. Right now, it's still on flat screens, but some days that was started as a VR company, switched to 2D screens because that's where everybody is today. And they'll switch back when the when the glasses come out next year, the headsets from Apple and Facebook. There's a pretty cool dome in LA called the Wiz Dome or something. And they do like virtual, like bands are performing, but there's like mapping going on all around them. And it's really, really neat. If you have a chance to check it out, there was, I think Pink Floyd was doing something with them. And there's a lot of other musicians in LA uh, involved. Domes are cool, but soon you're going to have that in your living room. Why would you want to go to a dome? I, well, I, get, get rid of this idea. You're going to go and do things. Yes, you know, we're all going to do, do things, but we're going to have that dome in our living room soon. Well, this was right? for the, the band is performing, though, and you can go see them. Like, you're actually, I, you're there. I get that, but that only only 10,000 people can do that. I'm talking about millions of people, man. Let's oh, get yeah, to the yeah. new world. This was less. This is less than thousands. This is like hundreds. I know, because it's but hard they're... to get a ticket to a dome, a physical dome. You're going to have a virtual dome on the Apple headset coming next year. So why would you think like a physical thing now? you got to start thinking, virtual. I'm going to have a new audience showing up next year, you know, with headsets, with Oculus Quest and stuff like that. We're going to be able to reach a new audience in a new way. Where do I want to be performing at home to the world or do I need like where do you where do you see that? Do you want to get in another airport? I mean there you that's a good question are still gonna have to travel, okay? Because humans still like to see music and analog music, the real world music is still better than digital music. But most people can't experience this stuff, right? After last year, I just I just want to play in front of real people. <laughs> I know. But the trick is to now start capturing that with a bunch of 3D sensors so that you can put that up into virtual reality or augmented reality. And you can make your audience that's maybe a few thousand people in front of you. Now it's a million people. So when you that's have a show, you thinking. when you have a show, you map it all out virtually so people can walk through the stage while it's playing with cameras and sensors eventually today it's really hard to do that it costs millions of dollars to do that but soon i.e next year there's going to be stadiums that have 100 cameras in them that does volumetric right and there's going to be a lot of a lot of companies and a lot of pressure on the music industry to do this because i'm going to be watching music in my living room i'm not coming to coachella no more so if you want to get me as a consumer, you got to think about this new world that's coming. Love it. And this is great. We're in metaverses and virtual reality. You know, that's where the new market is. That's how you, that's how you get uh, the people to come and see you. Right? Did you see the virtual you know. Burning Man? Did you see oh, it? I did. I, I, I not just saw it. I partied there. Uh, um, and the, the, some of the people who were putting it on gave me a tour. It was awesome. Yeah, I have a lot of yeah. friends who did a lot of really amazing stuff that I've been watching what they're doing for next year. And they're actually using some of that technology just to um, show what their new art cars and plans are looking like. Um, yeah, yeah. I kind of took a year off of that just because I was like, I'm, I'm like out of it this year, but removing yeah. back to Canada. But uh, man, there's a lot of really cool stuff coming up with the technology. Like I've been using Ableton yeah. Live with a pretty elaborate setup that I can now stream from using Zoom that we've all, all these plugins attached to it. I hired one of the best guys to help me build it. And it's just, you know, I would never have dreamed that I could be where I am, where I can actually do it all from a laptop playing yeah. guitar. I had drummer, I have a drummer, a live drummer, but everything else is, is on Ableton and it just, it works. It sounds like the record. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. No, it's cool. Technology um, is really changing music, isn't it? Well, that's kind of why I like talking to keep the pulse on things with you a little bit because you're not there as a musician, you're as a consumer, as a creator, as a, 
father as a father. I'm in the front row cheering man <laughs> but you're you're but you're very vocal about how it should happen and it's good to yeah. hear someone who has the experience of watching other product launches fail and and just watching technology emerge over the last 20 years like I have an Atari 400 over there why because I want one there does anyone understand that no <laughs> yeah. um but it's been neat reminds watching. you of your childhood, right? <laughs> and that's what's up with like Star Wars and stuff. Like no one cares about stuff that didn't happen to them when they were young, but we do. So it's yeah. super interesting. Uh, my my kids are on uh, Discord with their with his friends back there. Yeah, and uh, Minecraft and Roblox and Gmod, all these you know, different kinds of games that you can play with your friends. You know. I actually just got a PS4 and started playing Grand Theft Auto with my homies I haven't seen in years. And it's been super fun. And you can do things together. It's just a collaborativeness. It doesn't even matter what you're playing. Yeah. It's just nice to, yeah. but when people are on like, oh, I have Microsoft or I have this, you can't hang out with them because they're not on the same thing. It's kind of frustrating. Yeah, uh, that is very frustrating. And that'll be actually an interesting question. Will the Apple ones talk with the Facebook ones, with the Snap ones, with the well, yeah, but the Google ones, right? but none of the ones you're mentioning include the PlayStation Network or the anything Nintendo related or anything, none of the consoles. And yeah. where is that market? Like, where are the Microsoft Xbox it, people and the PS4 people dying, going to be? Dying until they come out with glasses. I mean, I, Sony has a VR headset coming out next year, right? It's still corded. It's still not, uh, it's not going to be what Apple's coming. Apple's about to come out with something that's really mind blowing. And so, um, you know, the consoles are not of the past. Yeah, this is the new world of having kids on Zoom calls. <laughs> it's sort of fun. I think it's cool. Everybody's fam. Um, <laughs> but I can, I can chase them around too. See, this is what I, I have a DJI uh, gimbal. I'll show it to you in the mirror. I know what that is. So you can, I used to have one yeah. of those. Yeah, you See, hold it. Yeah, uh, and and you can move it around, and the camera stays pretty steady there. So I, I used to that use that with the the Swagtron <laughs> folks when I I worked at um, Swagtron. It was a hoverboard company, electric skateboards, electric hoverboards, and things like that. And I would use the gimbal. Yeah, <laughs> and so I get to. What do you want, Milan? Whatever. That's fun. He's gonna steal strawberry. Ever since I got the iPhone XR, the steady the steady cam on, even the iPhone seven with the stabilization, it's been so much better video. Um, this is a 12 Pro Max on here, and it's way better than any of those. But you still need, uh, if you want to have this kind of smoothness of a steady cam, you have to have a gimbal. You know? Yeah, I like that a lot. I have used it. steady. I have used yeah, one. Really My cool. buddy has one. They're, yeah, they're it's great. really cool because I could take you around and take you out to the Tesla and stuff like that. So. You should take me out to the Tesla. I've never seen it. What do you? Which one are you uh, driving? The Model Three. How do you? And is that the your favorite one, or do you have a favorite, or you have no, a plan? Uh, uh, if I was a billionaire, I'd have Model X or something. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not that rich. <laughs> I took a ride in the Model X. It was at Uber in Toronto, and I asked the guy, "I go, what are you doing with this?" And he's like, "I just use it to drive people across the town, and it pays my my car payments." I'll go in the Tesla here. This is awesome. This is what I see. This well, is why I love the you. The nice thing about doing podcasting in the Tesla is uh, it's a it's it's a uh, soundproof proof booth. I can get in here and yell and right. Wow. So it's like um, it's basically an audio isolation booth. Yeah. 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 So you're uh, okay. There we go. Yeah. So tell yeah. me about this car. I'll just switch you back. Um, the, the thing about Tesla, well, first of all, it's electric, right? And then everybody's like, we're all, we're all coming out with an electric truck or car, you know, Ford says oh, we're coming next year. And, uh, VW says we're coming with 30 cars in the next three years, four years. Um, so there's a bunch of batteries underneath me. Right. And, uh, it, it, it's, it's great from that aspect. It's fast, right? You've seen the, the videos. What I'm really keyed on is the experience of owning a product and uh, the AI in this car is, and the software is way ahead of like our Toyota or our, our uh, friends' other cars. Um, and the, the self-driving is gonna run away with the game. They have more data than anybody else does to do, to, to go from not working very well to it's fully like, it's mind blowing. 
Right. And when they license it to VW, does then VW gets all that data too? How does that work? No, they're not going to license. Uh, they're not going to license what what's in the Tesla to a VW. That just well, ain't going to work. Well, who is who's VW licensing it from? Aren't they getting like the? Some no, the- VW is building their own. VW is building their own autonomous. There's many many companies building their own autonomous com- uh, technology, but they don't have a million cars on the road with cameras that can change lanes and turn corners. So like you were saying, every only- time a Tesla drives by you, it, it's more data. <laughs> yeah it's refreshing the street as it goes by so if it sees you know a car wreck it can report that to the map and say hey there's police action here there's a street closed there's a lane closed or something like that right which is helpful yeah. to everyone yeah i'm expecting in 24 months apple uh, apple and google maps are going to be very threatened by tesla because tesla has the data they don't they don't have real-time data on the street and tesla does now Tesla is not very many places yet, right? They right. only have a million cars on the street. In my neighborhood, Tesla is everywhere. Right? There's five of them on my street, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> right, and I only have a small street here. So there's Teslas everywhere in Silicon Valley. But if you're in, you know, East Africa or Mumbai or something like that, you don't see Teslas at all. You've never even seen a Tesla yet. We have so, a few. In Northern Ontario, there's a lot in the bigger cities, but where I am, I've seen a couple around here, but th- there are some, yeah. so there's, they're, they're able to map it here too, you know? Yeah. No, it's, it's, um, there's 19 AI systems in this car and it fully self-drives, uh, you know, at some level. You can yeah. say you're supposed to keep your hand on the wheel. You can say uh, it doesn't do that intersection. It does that one. But it's uh, starting to get really amazing. And Elon says in the next few days, we're getting an update that's going to be mind-blowing, he said. So we'll see. Um, it's, I missed- This is already mind-blowing. So, you know, it's like, wow, you know, if, if something mind-blowing on top of mind-blowing comes, then, you know, we'll see where we are in a week I, or something. I missed your your... You had a little chat about Elon the other day before his broadcast on Saturday Night Live, but I did I did yeah. see SNL. Um, I thought it was hilarious, and I thought it was pretty cool of him to tell the world he has Asperger's. I didn't know that. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that either. And, and, um, and that was really interesting. And uh, although it totally makes sense, mo- most of the uh, tech industry leaders have some Asperger's in them um, because that's why they're good at technology. Right. I know it makes you just want they, to figure they have it out. A brain. Well, they have a brain that they don't care about people. <laughs> they, they care about, you know, sitting in front of a screen and figuring out a lot of detail. Right. And being able to store all that detail in their head. It's, it's uh, my son's autistic. So uh, I watch like he could tell you about 1960s Godzilla movies in detail. I can't do that. I, I don't care. It's, right. I don't, but I think it's just kind a, of mind. It's almost that. like the spectrum opens up other parts of the brain that allow more to happen. And it's just like, if we were to yeah. understand it, you might not look at it as an ailment. It might be a, a um, um, part uh, of the Dar- Darwin in a weird way, you know? Yeah. These are, I mean, it's a spectrum, right? My son's in the middle of the spectrum. So he didn't get hit with a lot of the genius side of this stuff, right? You, you see Rain Man and you start. Uh, seeing people who can memorize very weird things that's that's uh the asperger side right and then the other side is really a disabled person can't speak can't work can't do very much things for themselves right and and that's one side of the spectrum the side of the spectrum that mark zuckerberg and elon are on it gives you uh, some challenges with social right? You're, you're not, an, an autistic person can't look in your eyes very easily. It, it confuses their brain and they don't like doing that. They don't like having small talk, right? They, they like going straight to uh, telling you about Godzilla, right? Because well, God, <laughs> small talk feels inefficient. It does to that kind of brain. They'd rather look at their iPad, right? Or, or, or uh, do something else, right? Uh, it, these kids are very interesting to be around because they they are uh, 
they communicate very differently, they look at the world very differently, and their focus level is usually very different than ours. So they can sit and focus on something for a long time. So, I, I think you're uh, probably... A, that's how you learn how to code, right? I can't learn to code because I can't focus on that black screen for 2,000 hours, you know, trying to figure it out. <laughs> how I learned to code a little bit, which I'm not a coder now, but I took computer science yeah. and I had to learn. I had a book um, when we were younger in public school, we would get books from the book club and I got a, a computer programming book that had Atari 400 games in it. And I would type them all yeah. in 10,000 lines and use a tape deck cassette to save it and literally play the game. And if it didn't work, I'd be so mad, but then I'd, I'd just type it again and it would work. And then I would go in and figure out how to make it so I couldn't die. And that was the beginning yeah. of it. Yeah, that was yeah. really neat. Um, wow. I, I worked at a programming magazine and learned a little bit, but I, I never took it up. It, it's it's you it requires looking at the world a little differently than i do and i'm not good with languages my brain doesn't pick up languages very well i want to talk a little bit about security because last night i was listening to you guys yeah. on the the room and i thought it was very interesting that i'm a computer science person i know a lot about things but i feel like even with what i have i'm still like okay so now what do i got to do to secure everything and i wanted to talk a little yeah. bit about the hardware key <laughs> the mda but token for the Google before jail. that my suggestion it is everybody needs to start putting an hour a month on their calendar where they're going to just do research on secure that's all i want you to do go to oh, google see, I type how to how to make yourself more secure right how to, i like how that to but a I, password i feel like i've i'm beyond that because of my background and what i do I, and um i get that I get so, that, but most most people, even in your background, don't think enough about it and don't research how to pick passwords, don't research uh, hardware keys, don't research how to keep yourself secure. Don't look at other people who've gone through hacks, right? And learn from them. I, that's absolutely. how I learned a lot. Well, I what read, you said. I read everything, you know, I read everything when there's somebody who says, I got hacked and I lost all my money in crypto. I read everything about that. What? How did that happen? Right. Because when you know. said it I last night, protect my stuff. People could steal yeah. your NFT. Like, we're moving, get out of the buzzwords. We're moving more of our value into computers, right? If you have 10 NFTs on the wall and they cost a million dollars a piece, that's $10 million on your wall with in digital stuff, right? And if somebody can come in and steal that from you, they will. So, you have to, when you buy a new house, you have to look at the locks, right? And then say, hey, should I upgrade my locks, right? And same thing here. You need to upgrade your locks. You need to do some research. One hour a, a month. And no, I, I 100%. You're going to be, you're going to have a different, you're going to have a different conversation with me. Even you will have a different conversation in Europe if you do an hour a month of research because you're going to start really getting nerdy about it. And then we can have a nerdy conversation about well, it, right? I think, uh, I, I think most the less... people are not even there. Most people have shitty passwords. Most people don't use multi-factor authentication. They don't even know what it means when you ask them, right? They go, what is that? But that's what I want to and start it, spreading to my musician friends that I think can learn yeah. something from this is that they need a hardware key for their Gmail because Gmail is where everything yeah. lives. And you said, if someone gets your Gmail, you're fucked. But what are these yeah. people doing? And the reason for that, the reason for that, if, if I get into your e Gmail and kick you out and I take over your Gmail, most of the other service services will, or your email account, most of the other services will send an email to that account saying, hey, um, here's a way to reset your password, right? So if I have access to your Gmail, I can do that to all your other services. Now I have your bank, I have, I have your video game accounts, I have your Twitter account, your Instagram account, your Facebook account, because you, you didn't do what was needed to keep the hacker out of your email system. And that's job number one, protect your email. Hardware, Because that's the MDA center token. of everything. So. And, well, uh, we can talk about, you know, how do you go from no security, like a shitty password and no security to a pick a good password, go do a Google search on that. There's plenty of information on how to pick a real password. There's plenty of reading. I've been looking that. at I've done it. <laughs> like rainbow tables and how long does your password has to be to get 
hacked and like they can hack it in this much time if it's this long it's like are you kidding me yeah, yeah. i use last pass as well i use last pass do, do you still too. like last pass oh i do yeah, yeah okay. but you have to pay for it now it used to be free if you want to split it up a, between a, the mobile and the, and the desktop you have to pay for it yeah and but you know back to the the security so if you're if you're somebody who does who uses password as your password right and <laughs> And it, I, I know people like I know this, they're like right? 2021. <laughs> I'm like company name. How are you using this as a path? How are you not thinking about this? You're you're li living in a digital world now. You better start thinking about this stuff because you're about to get ripped off and you're yep. not going to be able to do anything about it. If you have if you have you know a hundred thousand dollars of crypto and you don't know about security and you haven't thought about security, you're gonna get rip the hot man <laughs> that is easy to do if you don't have good password strategy and you don't have you know a way to uh bind up your uh your your system so anyway so the hardware key i should go get my hardware key there's a little thing you stick in a usb drive yep it gives you a specific number off of that hardware that goes into the gmail and then gmail goes oh you're here thank you it's like an eye lock. in other words you have to you have to type in your password and you have to type to put your key into the computer and click a button on it so that the computer goes, oh, okay, you did your second factor. Now we know it's actually you. What right? if you lose that thing? <laughs> um, there's ways to deal with it. You, you, you can click on, I lost my key and they'll teach you, uh, but you should do some research on that. Yeah. Uh, how, Good to, question. how to make sure you have your uh, your real keys printed out and in a safe deposit box somewhere, right? So if you lose your key, you, you can still get those things and, and get back. And it has to be off-site storage so it doesn't burn down with the house. Uh, well, <laughs> that's number one, you know? You, right, security never ends. That's why I say it's an hour a month. You gotta spend the hour a month. If you don't spend an hour a month, you're not gonna think about all this stuff. You're gonna have weaknesses and you're gonna it's have uh, blind spots and, and you're just not gonna have the vocabulary to have a conversation with us about security, right? And, and keeping yourself safe. And this stuff really does matter. Now, Apple is going with face recognition and a fingerprint and soon they're gonna look at your eyes. So the, the, these big companies eventually are gonna get rid of passwords and get in and just do the security for you because they know we suck at it. But until that happens, it's on us, particularly if you're gonna get into crypto and start storing value in a, in a, in a USB key, right? <laughs> I mean, you, you better think this stuff through because if somebody gets that, you're dead and you lost a hundred grand or your life savings, right? Yeah, it's super, super like crazy, especially how like people have money and don't know how to use stuff. It's so funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You must see that a no, lot it's over true. There. But we're going into a world where you must do security research an hour a day, even if you're a mom, an hour even month. if you're a kid, an hour a month, just do some Google searches and do it once a month. That's all I need. You know, if you want to do more, go for it. But do an hour a month and you're going to get in a year, you're going to get pretty up to date, right? That's great. Because you're going to start taking better passwords. You're going to understand what we're talking about with these hardware keys. YubiKey is the company I use. Um, Google has a hardware key called Titan. If you're a yep. Mac user, that works great because it's a Bluetooth thing yep. that you just click on when you try to sign into Gmail for a new time on a that's new the one computer. i was interested in yeah, yeah that's pretty good um the yubikey is much more flexible LastPass uses yubikey oh really many many others oh yeah facebook uses yubikey and others use yubikey so good to know well whatever you, you pick one you know one is better than none as they say right if you have the google one at least you raise the fence around your house up a little bit and it's harder to steal stuff from you Right. So, it's not impossible because security is, I mean, if, if China's coming after you, <laughs> they're going to get you, right? <laughs> they're going to get into you. But what you're trying to make it is, uh, hard for is the average everyday criminal stealing your stuff. So they'll right? go to the next and, person instead of you. Absolutely. It's the same thing as putting a good lock on your front door, right? You, 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 why did you do that? So that people can't pick your lock as easily as the next guy, you know? Interesting. Or get a digital lock. So now you, 
you can uh, unlock the door when you're walking toward it, right? <laughs> you know, that's kind of... <laughs> so what, um, I know you mentioned Tutu. Are there any artists you liken these days? Any new artists that you're talking about or anyone that's really, really blowing the, the doors off your, your headphones? Yeah, you're breaking up there. I'm not sure if you're still hearing me. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Oh yeah, there's a whole, there, there's a whole group. Yeah, sorry, you're just, um, um, your bits are, flaking out somewhere between my phone and uh you <laughs> so you're getting a we're getting a there i'll a, turn the video a, off a little a bit of a yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be cool uh, are we doing audio only or are we doing video uh and video and audio i got zoom and i'm okay. recording it with another camera and i'm going to edit it all for youtube oh, later cool. yeah i'm not this is definitely not streaming <laughs> oh no no problem i just um you turn off your camera so i was like oh are we doing audio only because <laughs> i'll turn off mine too <laughs> there i am <laughs> but uh yeah i'll turn my camera off because i have another camera here anyway that's filming me from the whole okay, room that's cool i've got you on a video that's screen cool. next to me uh, like i'm trying to do like the awesome. jimmy fallon thing where he has a video screen and the person there and i'm also recording the zoom and i just bought pro zoom like two days ago very cool so yeah, uh, enough about security. Uh, what yeah. were we going to move music. on to now? <laughs> music. <laughs> music. <laughs> music is about to see a re rejuvenation because even if you have old masters, you are going to be able to re-release those masters in spatial audio and people are going to walk around your band or your, your performance in a new way, right? And that's coming next year. So you have to start thinking about, oh, where's my masters? And do I have multi-track masters to go back and re re Oh, I know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I had to get two inch right? tapes so, dumped down to digital from our very first artist just so we could get them and I could like remix stuff. Yeah, you know? and the two inch tape is analog, right? Yep, the drums sound great. Yeah. But the funny thing yeah. is, we, we did some stuff Neil where Young we took me the... into a studio and we listened to analog on this two inch tape and it was amazing. And then we listened to the same recording in on high-end digital equipment that he used to cut the, the, the master up into digital. And we listened at 600 kilohertz per second, which is very, very fine resolution digital, right? CDs are only 44.1 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 44,000 times a second, it's taking a... a an image of your uh, music and slicing it up. Well, there's, there's uh, a trade-off there, right? 96K, you know, is really the most you want to go to right now because otherwise you're spending too much yeah. disk space. Yep. I, it's always a trade-off, right? Do you want more resolution? Do you want better quality? Do you want closer to analog? I think 24-bit 96 can, is good for most stuff. It's pretty good, but there was a difference from 600. <laughs> right? Well, but I'm, my difference is, tiny difference, you know? I'm saying 24 bit instead of 16 bit. <laughs> uh -huh. And I'm, I'm saying up it to 24 bit and up it to 96 for now, if you're doing stuff. Um, what you're saying is obviously yep. higher, but um, well, generally Spotify I think- Spotify and Apple Music are coming out with high resolution music services this year. D uh, Tidal is already out there, right? So. Um, and you can hear a little difference between Tidal and Spotify because Spotify is down at the lower res, uh, you know, at the 44, and then they're doing a lot of compression to mm -hmm. save space and make it possible for your phone to get music uh, anywhere, right? So, um, yeah, the music industry is fun, isn't it? Uh, you know, all, I did all, a record uh, and uh, lockdown happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Um, this new world is coming uh, where we're going to have um, infinite surround sound and we're going to have sound programmatically put on the real world. So Volvo told me about this. Volvo and Apple are working together. They're putting a 3D sensor on the uh, dashboard of the new cars. And mm -hmm. there's another sensor that looks at you. And there's a couple of reasons you need to do that. First, if there's a few microphones around your windshield, right, an, an array of microphones, uh, which is how noise canceling can be done, if they know where the sound is coming from in 3D space, they can focus the attention of those microphones uh, using a computer. That's, that's what array microphones do. And, and that's they why can... this headphone has nine separate microphones on it. And right? because it's a 
uh, fabricated product that they've made themselves. They know where all the all the noise comes from. They know if it's noise from the yep. road, and they've already tested all this. Well, even better, if my mouth is right here, and there's microphones here and a 3D sensor aimed at my mouth, it knows where my mouth is, and it can get rid of all the other noise. It can just wow. focus right on my mouth because it knows I'm talking to the windshield because I'm on a Zoom call or something like that. How does that work for or an acoustic a, guitar performance with a bunch of acoustic uh, artists? That'd be pretty cool, having like each instrument dialed in by this microphone setup or something. Yeah, I'm not sure how it would work on... With my, with instruments, you can put microphones on the instrument, so right. which, which is what you really want to do now. Now you want to make sure each of your instruments is on a separate track on your master. Because oh, you're absolutely. Because you need to spit that... You're going to need to spit those separate tracks out on spatial audio soon. And so you're going to, next year, you're going to have some new work to do. Well, to rethink your audio masters, right? What I'm doing right now is figuring out how to stream, right? Like if I'm at a concert and I'm performing and I'm almost, I'm also streaming, I have to make sure that I'm, I'm using Ableton. I've got guitar in, I've got my drummer is electronic drums. They have to be fed into my setup. And then the mix has to go out. So I'm going to the front of house with my stereo back tracks and then my guitar and my yep. vocal. And then we're going to have to use another sound card to put the drummer's drums on it. Cause I'm only using one uh, universal audio sound card right now. Uh, and it cool. works, but uh, we wow. figured it out. So yeah, it can but scale anyways, it up to staple center. Record, if you're going to distribute that on Spotify or on Apple music, you're going to, they're, they're going to have spatial audio services by the end of next year. So you're That's the big thing, musicians. Spatial out. audio. Learn how to do that. Yeah, yeah. Damn. And learn what that means. If you get these new Apple headphones, or even the Apple Air AirPod Pros, the little ones. Yeah. They have spatial audio now, and you can get an app called Spatial Bliss, which puts you into a soundscape, and then you can move sound all the way around you. It's really cool. Um, on an iPhone. So I wonder that, what these guys play can with do. that for an hour, and you're going to start realizing, oh, okay. We now are not just putting audio on two channel anymore, right? Like when I sold stereos in the eighties, I had two speakers. Everybody bought two speakers, right? And had a receipt, had an amplifier for two two channel. Uh, that world is over. We're and going into a million channel world. Now, but just right? adding the left Trillion channel from mono to the left and the right allowed you the ability to know where stuff was. Yes, but this, it's another. Now this is the next. Now, is next level, you can put sound on my steering wheel. You can put sound on my uh, mirror. You can put sound on a button. Uh, Volvo said the buttons are going to talk to you when you touch, to, touch them. Right, because nobody right. knows what the buttons do. <laughs> yeah, well, and also you can do all sorts of music or sounds. Or In this Tesla, we have fart noises, right? <laughs> so, hey, you can do all sorts of fun things if you know where that button is and know how to apply sound to that programmatically. But that requires you to think of sound as a discrete thing that you would put on a specific thing, right? And, and that's a, a new skill for a musician because you, you don't think like that. You don't think about, oh, could we do a concert in somebody's kitchen and put the guitar on one Coke bottle and put the trumpet on the, another Coke bottle. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't think like that. So, but you could, you will have to by the end of next, no, you will have to by the end of next year. Very, so, very. That, so just, this is, this is why just, I talk do you want to you. get ahead of the, do you want to get ahead of the game or not? This is why I talk That's to you. All. Good stuff. Robert. Yeah, yeah. You can react to what the market is telling you to do and be later, or you can be first. Well, I think the people who are first are like the bigger artists in the world, like Marshmallow, who have that budget to try it and be allowed to have Fortnite say, okay, why do you want to try this? Because they know each other, you know, it's like kind of nice. But uh, it's easier to do things when you have money, particularly if, if you're going into volumetric, because you, you get, you get, if you're going to want to record your band and put it into my living room, that requires a volumetric studio that costs money, you know? thousands of dollars a minute well so and maybe a little less going down now but it's still fairly expensive and it's still a time consuming process and you have to have a tech team that can do that i've right? offered to be a guinea pig for anyone who wants to try it you know people that have a tech team but they don't have an yeah. artist and if you know of anyone or hear of yeah. anyone i've got an album done i've got everything ready to go did i send it to you by the way i'll send it to you yeah, yeah you did it's awesome 
Oh, good. I'm glad you heard it. Um, we yeah. we got airplay on a bunch of places, even in LA and even here, and we're just kind of working on a distribution deal. And I have a manager and a lot of people. I finally have a drummer, so I'm excited. But Robert, um, I uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. I, I think it's really yeah. interesting to hear all the great stories you have. The, um, the reason spatial audio is happening by the way yeah is video games are built on unity 60 percent of video games are built on this platform called unity which is a public company right um and the others are built mostly on the unreal unreal engine, engine. both of these engines automatically put sound on volumetric pixels around you right it, they automatically give you spatial audio that you can walk around a, a band and hear the band from different angles so and so we're going to get this because, right? right? Because, because Unity is coming to Apple's headsets, because Apple is coming in the next year with a new headset that's going to be mind blowing, because Facebook is doing the same thing, because Snap is doing the same thing, because. because. So that's why I think why we're talking, right? It's time yeah. to start doing some research. And, you know, and, and thinking my, about what would you do with augmented reality in somebody's home? My friend, Laura uh, Escade, she has an amazing yeah. company called um, uh, Electronic Creatives. They do like stuff for the weekend and people like that. Really cool stuff. They, they were doing something at the Wisdom with Unreal Engine, I believe, behind them. Yeah. So they're using artists I know are using Unreal for live and it's pretty cool. Were you thinking maybe Unity would be not... Would that would Unity be used instead of Unreal, or do they work together? I don't understand it. I, I'm expecting now. Unity is better for shitty little GPU. So okay, let's get nerdy a little bit. Okay. Inside <laughs> the visor that's coming, uh, which is like these headphones, right? These headphones are over your ears. They cover your ears. They don't let the real world come to your ears anymore. They have microphones that capture the real world, digitize it, and put it in your ear. That's great. But when we get the visor, everything that you see is, is uh, either a, a point or a polygon, a triangle, or a hexagon, or a voxel, a volumetric pixel, which is like a little digital sugar cube. And each sugar cube um, can play music, right? So right. think about that. There's millions of them around me in, in this Tesla. If I have these glasses on, it's seeing the world at some small resolution and putting stuff on there. All of that work needs GPU, needs a graphic processor because all of the little uh, virtual sugar cubes are being created by the computer, right? And the computer that's inside a, a headphone is small. It's not like a big ass NVIDIA card that's this big in the, in the middle of your PC. right? So if you want to do something that has some graphical, uh, that looks like the real world, right? That's probably Unreal Engine with a big ass and NVIDIA card. If you're going to go down from that a little bit with a with a Oculus Quest, a Facebook device, or a, or this new Apple device that's coming, you won't have as quite as many polygons as as a high end NVIDIA card has, right? A thousand dollar NVIDIA card but it'll be you can wear it while walking around right without a cord <laughs> corded into your nvidia card right, right. my That's first vr machine i had a cord that went into my nvidia card right now i don't have that i just have an oculus quest that is finally on untethered yeah and most of the most of the, uh, the the platform that works the best with these smaller gpus is on is unity and so I'm expecting Unity to be uh, doing a lot of stuff with Apple next year. Uh, All in right. fact, Unity showed me that you're going to have bands in your kitchen, and it's going to be pretty mind blowing. Think so, about being a, at a Lady Gaga concert in your kitchen and having the full stage in your kitchen. It gets rid of half your kitchen and the other half is Lady Gaga, uh, you know, performing for you. So musicians, make sure you have your stems ready and, and properly um, split yeah. up with all your all your instruments separated and don't let yeah. the producer keep those tracks on you. Well, this is why I want you to get a VR headset because it causes you to start dreaming. What would I do if I could put sound all around me like this? 
games? What what would I do with video games? What would I do with movies? What well, you could have do? a studio right. that has gear in it that you don't own. Yeah. That's what I want. Gear, yeah. virtual gear. I, the virtualization of the world is coming, right? That, that's why I, we spent some time talking about security. If, if all your machines you bought virtually, <laughs> you know, were rented from Amazon or some service, uh, you know, you got to secure that shit. <laughs> Otherwise, somebody will come in and fuck it up, right? Exactly. Um, I love that on my phone, it's, I it's, use... I use iRig and I can pick from apps that I want. I don't even have to buy them anymore. I can just, you, I, you can do things now like that again. And uh, thanks for coming on my podcast. This is the first one inaugural the musicians. Hey, thank you. Um, that I believe that any musician who watches this will awesome. get tons of information about security just from you. So thank you. And uh, I can't wait to play a show somewhere where you guys can come check it out. All right. Thank you. Thanks can't for wait. showing me your Tesla. Thanks. And uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. And, and I'm on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, all the usual if, places. If people so, want to look you yeah. up on anywhere, like oh, yeah. S C O B L E, just search it and you'll find me. Scobalizer. Yeah, Robert Scoble. All yeah, right. Scobalizer on, on Twitter is the best place. Join a Twitter chat with us. We'll come talk to you soon. And you do that pretty much all the time. So, oh, yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Drive safe awesome. into your home. Keep Great it to up, see you, man. buddy. Keep entertaining the world. We need more. We need more music in the world. You know, if you, I've, I've been a little out there. I love music. I love going to music. I love going to live music. Right. I've I've had musicians playing concerts in my kitchen for real. It's badass, right? Well, my dinner with Slash, right? So uh, I've been around. It's just I think about distribution, and I want you guys to make some money, right? I hear you. you know, and and. You start looking at Coachella, can get twenty thousand people in the Sahara tent. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's you collect pick. them too. Huh? There's slashes. That's pick. great. And there's Dime Bag awesome. Devil's pick. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to to get back out there. But we're we're actually I can't even get a haircut. I'm like Giorgio Sikas. <laughs> we we are locked too, down man. in Ontario. That's why I got these. Uh, a hat on and over your headphones you can't see uh, my messy hair you know? <laughs> I was, I thanks put, man i can always put these on the, those <laughs> see that if you were wearing those around i'd be like oh you got the apple glasses already man how did you get those <laughs> exactly all right my friend i'll uh, catch up with you see. sometime and thanks for joining the podcast you have a wonderful rest Thank of your you. day all right Love see you later you. thanks cheers buddy